and welcome to Wedding Secrets with me, Claire. Firstly, huge congratulations on your big day and I hope your planning's going well. Now here at Wedding Secrets, we understand just how stressful planning a wedding can be. Now what we wanna do is we wanna share our expert knowledge and years of experience with you at home. We've created some videos for you on lots of different topics. So have a good look through our videos and maybe if there's a few queries or a few problems you're having within planning, perhaps one of our videos can help you out and answer them. If not, feel free to put us a comment in the comment box, especially if there's a certain video or a certain topic you would like us to bring to you. Now, why here at Wedding Secrets? Well, we have been through so many journeys with so many couples, we thought it's only fair that we share our expert knowledge with you. Which brings me to today's video. Now, today's video is called Top 10 Problems Every Bride Faces on the Run Up To Her Wedding. But grooms, this is a good video for you too. So do tune in with us as well. going to work, we are going to work through the top 10 problems lots of brides often say are the biggest issues when planning their wedding. And we're going to give you a bit of advice from how we think best to answer these questions. Also, if you feel like there's a question that's not been answered or something else you'd like to ask, just let us know on the comments below and we will get back to you. So before we count down on the top 10, do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to give us a like. So let's get started. Coming in at number 10, one of the biggest problems most brides find, and I'm sure you might agree, yep, picky eaters. Now, when we talk about picky eaters, we have a whole range that can come into that category. So on your guest list, you might have vegetarians, you might have vegans, or you might have health problems such as diabetes. Then you might have um, different religious, so at kosher, you need kosher meat. And then also in that category is any of those friends that are maybe on the Atkins diet, yeah. <laughs> and then you also have the category of, do you know those guests that are just picky eaters? Yeah, we all know the ones, don't we? So this is the issue. At your wedding, you're gonna be trying to cater for all of these different things. Now, before you get too caught up, here at Wedding Secrets, the one thing we want you to remember is this is your big day, it's your wedding, and above all else, your guests with those special requirements, they don't always expect you to go above and beyond. They understand, and they understand as well. When it comes to budgeting, it's very difficult to include and to make everybody happy. So firstly, take the pressure off yourself. Do not worry. Now, we've got a few ideas that might help you out when it comes to catering for everybody. When it comes to your sit-down meal, always, we do say, have one vegetarian option and then maybe two meat options, just to keep it varied. But another idea, have you thought, is a sit-down meal right for us? How about a buffet option? It's not for everybody, but it's just an idea in terms of catering for all those fussy eaters. Another idea, and I actually went to a wedding and it was really good. So you sit down at your meal, at your table, and each table is brought their own buffet selection. So it's almost like everybody on our table could just have what we had on our table in large platters. And that's a really good idea, especially these certain tables that you want to cater to. But like we said, do not put too much pressure on yourself. Right, now our second most biggest problem that brides face, and this is coming in at number nine. It is pressure to invite everybody. <laughs> 
it's a big one. Just because someone has invited you to their wedding in the past, that does not mean that you have to invite them to your wedding. It's a tough one and it's a hard conversation, but if you can't cater on budget and numbers, then you simply can't. The best way to address this is when you're talking to people that you just can't fit on the invite list, is to explain you've got a tight budget and you have to accommodate two families and they will, of course, understand. One common thing we do in the UK to cater for this is to then have the evening reception. So those are certain certain friends and family members that you just can't squeeze in during the day, have them come on the evening. So then you still get to see them at some point throughout the day. Our next one, which is coming in at number seven. Aha, okay, this is a big one. And I know this one very personally. Traditional weddings. Maybe your parents are putting lots of pressure on you or aunts or uncles or nanas and granddads to do traditional aspects in your wedding. Now, perhaps you're looking for more of a contemporary feel for a wedding, but we do have to remember, this is a big day for parents as well. And of course, if they are contributing to the wedding, then they will feel like they want to have some level of say. So the best example I can give you is my sister is getting married soon and my dad wants to walk her down the aisle, but my sister, she didn't really want the traditional setup. However, after she considered it and thought through, she decided, yes, I would like my dad to walk me down the aisle. He is helping to pay for the wedding and it's a big moment for my dad. So do think about, yes, if you don't want a traditional wedding, still think of those traditional aspects just to keep the parents happy. <laughs> Coming in at number six, bridesmaid dresses. Now, firstly, if you're paying for your bridesmaid's dress, this does not apply to you. If you're not, and you're asking your bridesmaids to buy their own dresses, which is absolutely fine, there's a few things you've got to remember. So remember, bridesmaids, they may not all have the same budget. The best way to conquer this, keep the price of the dress as low as you can to still suit the style. Now, also, the next thing is bridesmaids may only be wearing your dress for a few hours. So perhaps think about getting a bridesmaid dress style that they can wear again, such as a shorter dress or a party dress. These are just some different ideas. Also, a really nice touch that we feel is a kind gesture. If they're paying for their dress, why not you cover the cost of their shoes, their accessories, their bag and perhaps a little bit of makeup for the day. And it just takes that financial strain off your bridesmaids a little bit more. We are coming halfway. Number five, gift list guests. What do we mean by this? Now, many, many guests do bring a gift to the wedding, but some do not. You have to understand it's not everybody's tradition to do this. Some people might not have budget to gift you. However, once the wedding is complete, we strongly suggest you send every single guest, whether a gift received or not, a thank you note, whether it be a card or a postcard, just to say thank you for coming. Because although they might not have brought a gift, they might have booked time off from work to be there with you today. They've had to pay for an outfit. They've had to pay for transport. So do bear that in mind. And an extra added note, on your thank you, say something personal, such as, Paul, I really loved your dance moves at our wedding. Sandra, I loved your blue hat at our wedding. Little touches to just really acknowledge that they were part of your day. Right, we are coming in at number four. <gasps> this is one that really concerns many of our brides and grooms. RSVP radio silence. If your guests are not RSVPing, 
absolutely, absolutely you must chase them, especially when it comes to that final count. But we all have those family members and those friends that say, yes, yes, I'll come, but you're a bit unsure, you've not heard of them for a while, you're worried they might not come. Still count that guest as a confirmed guest because the last thing you want on your wedding day is to be scrambling around, looking for extra chairs, squeezing them into the seating plan. So yes, if they have said yes and they've confirmed, unfortunately, whether they come or not, you are gonna have to count them as a guest. One thing that we do know at probability of weddings, even when you have your RSVP'd guests, sometimes, up to 20% of those guests will not turn up on the day. Anything due to work, illness, holiday bookings, it happens. But the last thing you want is to be running around like a headless chicken on the day. So number, oh, number three. Okay, so this is a big one and it does link in to our number four. Should I chase guests that have not RSVP'd. The best advice that we can give is set yourself a deadline. When it gets that deadline, you are gonna have to pester. <laughs> and it's not the nicest thing, but when it comes to you getting your final count of guests, it's vital. It's vital to your seating plan. It's vital to your number for your meal. So yes, do chase. Do not feel embarrassed about making them confirm. It's absolutely understandable. Right, oh, number two, when it comes to gifting. Now, here in the UK, we do slightly different to our American friends. We don't necessarily do gift registering, which is something very popular over in the States. Lots of us do feel very awkward about asking for cash gifts instead of the regular kinds of wedding gifts, such as ornaments and pretty things. Sometimes, deep down inside, we just want the cash instead. Or maybe there's certain items, maybe you're moving house and you're gonna be needing kettles and toasters, but you want to choose it yourself. Do not feel bad about asking in your invitation, no gifts, a cash donation to help us on our new adventure, or perhaps money towards our honeymoon would be amazing. I've been to many weddings and I'm very used to seeing that now on invitations. And you know what? In all honesty, as a guest, I would rather put 20 pounds in a card than have to go shopping. So no problems there. Okay, so we are almost at the top. Something that I know my friends have had great difficulty with your plus ones. Perhaps you have those friends are in new relationships or you know, you're know tight on numbers. Do you add in their plus one or not? If you have not got the budget to stretch out to plus ones, it's completely understandable. All you need to do is explain to your guests you cannot add on a plus one due to your budgeting and you have to accommodate two families. Do not worry, they will understand and to give somebody a single ticket to a wedding is completely acceptable. Right, we are coming in at number one, hungry vendors. What do we mean by hungry vendors? Well, sometimes you arrive at your wedding and the professionals such as photographers, videographers, musicians, um, if you've got an external wedding planner, sometimes they do also expect a seat at your wedding and to have dinner. This is the most important. For me personally, I think you need to clarify before your wedding. What you need to do is you need to speak to each one of them, have a read through your contract and find out if they are expecting a sit down meal, if they are expecting to be as though one of the guests. This is crucial because you need to add in this to your catering, to your numbers, to everything such as seating plans, where will they eat? A few different ways to accommodate this because it can add up to the budget is, like I said, go through your contract, explain and find out what their expectations are before the wedding. 
A great way to save on budget is to speak to your caterers and ask if the caterers could do a platter and a real nice platter, just sandwiches, a salad, and then that platter could be for those members, those wedding professionals that are there working. And it just makes everything so much easier. And it's a really, really nice gesture as well. So there you have it. Your top 10 problems that most brides say they face on their wedding day. I hope that we've managed to relieve some of that stress, relieve some of that pressure, and maybe if you give you some tips that you might not have already thought about. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, give us a comment. We've got many, many more videos on lots of different topics. Or if there's something you can't see, do just give us a message. Go and check out all of the rest of our videos and I'll see you on our next one.